last year quite an active year, we launched our X4 program, which will be the replacement of our today's Dauphin family. We unveiled the EC145 T2, and we got a very, very positive response from the market. Then the E versions, Dauphin, B3E, and the Ecoray family, very good response of the market as well. And of course, for the first time, we have shown the X-Cube, our hybrid helicopter concept, which is not necessarily high speed only, it's high productivity. I strongly believe that speed in itself makes only sense if the increase in speed, and by that, the increase of nautical miles times passengers or times payload per flight hour is much higher than the increase of cost per flight hour. And what we try to achieve, and we are, after the test campaigns which we have done now, we are quite certain that we will do it, we intend to achieve a 50% increase in nautical miles times payload per flight hour, but we want to limit the increase in cost and life cycle cost, which means acquisition plus operating cost, to maximum 20%. We need to offer more productivity. I don't believe in concepts where the increase in cost is higher than the increase in actually the mission capability which you will get. And X-Cube is the answer to that. First hybrid flight in autumn last year. Now, we are not today there where we will have the full electrical driven helicopter. Batteries are a bit weak for that and a bit heavy. What we are doing here is we are installing an additional electrical power unit on single engine helicopters for safety reasons, because this gives the helicopter pilot, in particular in case of engine failure, of auto rotation, additional safety margin to bring the helicopter safely back to the ground. Abadine is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy to use avionics and the new IFD540 GPS Navcom sets a new standard for simplicity in communication and LPV navigation. As a slide-in replacement for existing 530 series navigators and with a highly intuitive touchscreen control, the IFD540 makes it much easier to access the information you want when you want it, reducing head downtime and making flying more enjoyable. Finally, you have a choice, and the choice is easy. Avidyne. The X-Cube will resume flights after a very major safety inspection, by the way, without major findings, and a significant upgrade of the dynamic chain. It will resume flights by the end of this month. And we are not flying around toys. We are flying with a helicopter which has the full cabin size of a Dauphin. And to make sure that everybody of you will have the capability to really discover this, we have decided that the helicopter will come over to the United States for a demo campaign in summer 2012. We first go for the second part of the flight test campaign in Europe, and we believe that 232 knots is nice, but a bit more is nicer, so we will go a bit further, and then in summer, we will bring the aircraft over to the United States to show it here to our US customer base, civil, as well as military, and to let people experience what such a concept can do. X4. We truly believe this will be a game changer. We have the lowest noise helicopters today. With the X4, we intend to improve noise by 30%, and we intend to improve fuel consumption by 30% as well. This combined with and I will not go very much on detail, I will not say more than what you can see on the right side regarding the cockpit of this helicopter. This combined with a completely different philosophy to fly a helicopter. We all know that 80% of the helicopter accidents have operational root causes. And we believe there are several solutions, several ways to contribute to a higher flight safety. Clearly, it's the helicopter itself. Clearly, it's the man-machine interface, the easy, easiness, easiness to fly the helicopter. It's as well training, for sure. And we believe that with this new way to fly helicopters, together with our partners, Thales, Sajem, we will develop a system to fly the helicopter which will make a major breakthrough in improving safety in the future. You can compare it with a conventional flight deck in earlier aircrafts and the fly-by-wire which came first from Airbus. And you see the cockpit looks slightly different 
than a cockpit of today's helicopters. Welcome to Airborne, the latest programming initiative from the Aero News Network. Hosted by Ashley Hale, Airborne is a visually stunning weekly high-def newscast featuring guest appearances and commentary from some of aviation's leading dignitaries, as well as ANN's own familiar faces. With aggressive reporting, extensive video, and a number of special aero features, Airborne offers truly engaging, fast-paced aero news content and analysis of lasting value to all of aviation. And of course, the performance increase in EC-175, which we announced in December, roughly 30% better performance than what we had announced before. This means with all seats laid out, 16 passengers on board, oil and gas flight profile, you will go 135 nautical miles with this helicopter. And this brings the majority of the oil rigs within the range and makes this tool as well a high productivity tool for the customers. And of course, there are some new missions as well for which we need to provide the right vertical lift solutions. If it's wind farms, in particular offshore wind farms, if it's natural resources which are discovered, which are explored further out in the world, Greenland, deep inside Siberia, far away from the, from the shore in, in offshore. And we as well believe that there might be a market in the 20s for vertical lift commuter solutions. Why is that? Actually, if you land on an airport with a small ATR, Bombardier, Embraer, or whatever aircraft carrying 50 passengers, it takes exactly the same slot like an A380 or 747. And airport infrastructure is becoming a scarce resource. Landing slots are a scarce resource, in particular in Western Europe and in the United States. And every additional runway, which is not in the planning today, at least in Europe, and it's partially true as well for the United States, which is not in the planning today, will not be there before 2030. This means vertical lift commuting might become a significant market in the future. This will need higher speed solutions and good comfort, and we are preparing ourselves to be a player in this market, which we believe will come.